Okay, and we're going to be talking about on some uh, serious problems that's happening in the airlines industry. And uh, some of the great issues that is, um, you know, possibly taking foot. Now, I remember that I had said something about this almost 10 months ago, where practically that the all these people are hiring for inclusion and stuff like that and diversity and it's having a net negative on them it's not actually working the people are suffering the, uh, the quality is going down and we're seeing the actual negatives of <clears throat> of these people of these industries of these companies failing time and time again because they can't seem to do it correctly so without further ado here we get into it we have this Hundreds of Alaska Airlines United flights remain canceled Monday after Boeing 737 MAX 9 groundings. Hundreds of Alaska Airlines and United Air Airlines flights remained canceled Monday in the wake of the Federal Aviation Administration's decision to ground all Boeing 737 MAX 9 aircraft. According to data from tracking at site Flyware, uh, 220 new United flights United flights are affected, but about 140 Alaskan Airlines flights, 20% of the Seattle-based carriers' routes have been affected as of 9.30.55 a.m. ET Monday morning. The cancellations are concentrated at Alaska Seattle Tacoma International Airport hub. Other airports seeing outsized cancellations include New York Liberty International Airport, Denver International Airport, and Chicago Hare International Airport. In a statement on its website late Sunday, Alaska said the FAA's grounding order had significantly impacted our operation and that cancellations would continue through the first half of the week. Already, the 170 flights it canceled Sunday had affected roughly 25,000 travelers, it said. Both Alaska and United said, uh, said affected passengers would be rerouted to, the, rerouted, my apologies, to their destinations. The decision to ground the Boeing aircraft came after a panel blew out of, out of an Alaska plane's fuselage with 171 passengers and six crew members on board Friday, forcing the aircraft to make an emergency landing. So we're going to actually have we actually have a little bit of evidence and a video of this of this actually happening here, and uh, it's it's quite terrifying. This would not make me feel comfortable at all. By the way, I don't have a fear of flying, but I also don't like uh, you know I don't like heights, and heights is a kind of a problem for me. See here, the door is blown wide open. They had to do it for emergency landing. It was not great, and this is what we're seeing here. Now we'll go over to here as well, where we have Boeing, where they have diversity inclusion. Each member of our global team brings something uniquely valuable to Boeing, and we grow stronger when everyone has an opportunity to contribute. We continue to take meaningful steps to advance an open and respectful environment where everyone feels welcome, not just at Boeing, but also in the surrounding communities where we live. Boeing's culture of uh, culture of inclusion involves creating an environment that retains and attracts the world's top talent and inspires every teammate to do their best work and their careers while making a positive impact on the world. No, because your inclusion is actively destroying or removing anything of that would be of merit. You don't hire based on their merit or um, based on their skill, based on their actual talents. You based on their skin color or their gender rather than doing anything else. And this is my massive problem with this. The whole part with the whole problem with DEI is that you're not choosing people best for the job. You're choosing people that are potentially worse for the job. And we can't be having that. DEI is causing this. You know what also causes problem? When you have things like this, we have this just automatically just being blown wide open for your DEI uh, engineers, your DEI uh, uh, your DEI uh, pilots and all this stuff, all this upcoming things is going to get worse. There's going to be more plane problems because you people can't seem to get it right. You can't hire people off of merit. You have to hire off of skin color, which makes you racist, by the way. I would, if I had a company, I would hire them mostly just based off of talent and skill. Also, you have to understand, which I will be showing people here in a, in a little bit here, on why this is a problem, um, among other things. So we have loss of Alaska cockpit recording rekindles industry safety debate. 
Uh, it says the cockpit voice recorded data on the uh, on Alaska Airlines Boeing 737 Max 9. Uh, uh, jet which lost panel mid flight on Friday was overwritten. U.S. authorities said re- re- renewing attention on long standing safety calls for longer in, in flight recordings. National Transportation Safety Board Chair Jennifer Hamendi said on Sunday no data was available on the cockpit voice recorder because it was not retrieved within two hours when the recording restarts, re rate, erasing previous data. Hmm. Well, <laughs> well, 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 well. <laughs> Ah, God, you, you you just love to see it, right? You love to bloody see it. It's absolutely hilarious in a very messed up way. The U.S. requires copy voice recorders to log two hours of data versus 25 hours in Europe for planes made, at, made after 2021. Hmm. Well, we'll have more on that because we're going to go back into the p- future, everybody. Back into the fe- Back into the future. Back into the past of what already happens here. And um, I'm going to show you right now. Here you go. Here's this clip that I did about 10 months ago about things of this happening. And I, it looks like I'm coming close to being very, very right. Country or women. And only about 10% of that number are black Americans, Asian, Hispanic, or Latino. So first on CBS This Morning, we like when we can say that, I'm going to say it again. First on CBS This Morning, United Airlines is the only major U.S. airline to own a flight school. It's announcing its new plan to train 5,000 pilots by 2030, and at least half of them will be women or people of color. Errol Barnett has the story. Two decades ago, near runways like these, a Texas girl was discovering her love of aviation. My grandmother would take my sisters and I to the airport to watch the airplanes take off and land. A six-year-old, Tashiana Smith, was hooked. We could actually smell that jet fuel for a couple of days, and I still love that smell today. So you've been addicted to jet fuel since (laughs) you were a kid. Yes, sir. 24-year-old Smith is on a lifelong quest to become a commercial airline pilot, an expensive ambition. Flight training costs an average of $100,000. So over the years, Smith earned several scholarships through nonprofit organizations. She clearly remembers the first time an instructor handed over the controls. Once I started turning left and right, I was like, this is what I'm going to (laughs) do. She's following in the flight path of people like Marianne Schaefer, a 32-year veteran in the industry who is United Airlines' chief pilot. I believe it's related to just the thrill of taking off and controlling the airplane and landing. It really is just a feeling of empowerment. But both Smith and Schaefer say they'd like to see more female representation in the flight deck. Only 7% of United Airlines pilots are women, one of the highest percentages in the industry. And 13% of its pilots are people of color. They simply don't have the access or the opportunity. In an exclusive interview with CBS News, United CEO Scott Kirby is announcing a new effort to bring balance to the flight deck. We're excited at United to be announcing the United Aviate Academy to address the structural issues with the makeup of our pilots. So yeah, it's not look like it's going super well. They had this is what the United has done, and now we're seeing this. Where this is only this is not even a year out, guys. This is not a full year, practically a year, two months. But by the way, if we want to be honest, it's not a full year, and already things like this are happening. Now, this isn't just this. We have from Ed Wokeness here that BlackRock will be laying off six hundred employees, mostly from the ESG division. ESG global investments collapsed by five trillion in just two years. Five trillion dollars, guys. That's an unconceivable amount of money. Okay, we all know that a couple million dollars could this could save us for the rest of our lives. Five trillion, we could have generations upon generation of families that we could have and not run out of money ever and still have money to blow off. It's insane, inconceivable. ESG is a system used by BlackRock and Vanguard to blackmail companies into adopting woke practices. Here's the CEO. Uh, here's BlackRock CEO Larry Fink, and next to the CEO of MX, explaining how ESG is used to force behaviors. And we're going to watch this, and then a little bit more, and we'll end this. We're, going to, we're asking companies 
you have to force behaviors, and at BlackRock we are forcing behaviors. What we are doing internally is if you don't achieve these levels of impact, it, your compensation could be impacted, okay? You have to force behaviors. And if you don't force behaviors, whether it's gender or race or just any way you want to say the composition of your team, you're going to be impacted. Behaviors are going to have to change, and this is one thing we're, going to, we're asking companies. Yeah, that, that's what's going on. And somebody from the Right Angle News Network said it quite well. He goes on to say that the collapse of global ESG investments by $5 trillion in just two years shows that companies are no longer being manipulated into adopting work practices through this system. It is reassuring to see that businesses are no longer being forced and make their own decisions based on market forces and, and external pressures. Follow me if you agree. And I agree. And also, I said, I'll probably be making a video at some point on this as well, that... A lot of doubt of not being notified or telling people this, but a lot of these companies are going out and uh, pretty much just not hiring women due to their incompetency of doing some of the other jobs. Now, I'll, again, I'll be doing more of a sort of report on this, but again, this is what's been happening here, and it's just not really a surprise. We have this from Ashley St. Clair. She says, "Hey United, on July 29th, a United airplane, a United plane was nearly totaled after a hard landing. Who was flying that aircraft? Who was the co-pilot of former flight attendant who was fired and then rehired through United's EI program despite being on a list to not return to United? Am I correct that this individual failed trainings, including similar tr simulator training? Am I also correct that the United has covered up the EI disaster and many others?" Was number two at the Denver hiring center also on board through DEI? Did she, did she, or did she not change fail grade for DEI hires because it makes the numbers look bad? Did the instructor who failed this co-pilot ask corporate why they passed him? If true, this put a lot of lives at risk. Exactly. And that's what I said previously on my video before, that a lot of lives are going to be at risk here. And then we have, boom, this. United Airlines Boeing 7667 damaged at a hard Houston landing. And, by the way, this was republished on August 1st of 2023. So, even less time before or after I announced this, there was already this happening. Guys, already this was happening, and this was in August. It's in January of 2024, and this is just, uh, this was already, it's insane, guys. The DEI programs are putting people's lives at severe risk. And I wouldn't even recommend people flying on the day 100% needed to, or at the at very least at United, because these companies cannot keep your lives as safe, as safe, safety at all and DEI is ruining the safety of these pl of these places ruining uh the industry and this is as i said there's going to be a mass amount of tragedies it has just started beginning and it's, it's unconceivable unconceivable that this is going on and we have to we had to worry and this is having united flights so again Let's see what happens, because I don't think, I think we're going to really have to start saying that, okay, guys, DI needs to stop. We need to hire base people based on merit, because people are going to die if we keep this up. All right, guys, that's it the video. Like, subscribe, share, and as always, take care, be safe, don't fly. I'm disgusted by what I see in public. Even people closest to us can't be trusted. This is algorithmic disease, the social media.